it hasn't been enough for someone to live their lifestyle. Now there is a demand that has become very insidious, I would say, in our culture today, where not only does someone have to live their life, okay. you have to endorse and celebrate the choices that they are making in their life. And this transition between mutual respect in terms of adults being able to make adult decisions and no, 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 it's not only you have to allow me to make my choice, you have to support and praise the fact that I have made my choice and that has translated into all facets of society. And that is the background for what happened last night in yeah. Philadelphia. The Flyers are the NHL team, the professional hockey team in the city of Philadelphia. They had a pride night, which has become very, very common in the world of sports. And as part of that, you are not only required to acknowledge that people can choose who they want to love, you're also now required to celebrate their life choices. It's a, a big growth in the expectation. A Russian hockey player by the name of Ivan Prokhorov decided, even though he played for the Philadelphia Flyers, he was not willing to put on a gay pride jersey as a part of their uh, festivities last night in Philadelphia. And this has turned into a big story as he is being ripped to shreds by many different woke sports media out there. But he said it was simply a matter of his Russian Orthodox faith. Listen to this when he was asked about it immediately after the game. I respect everybody's choices. My choice is to stay true to myself and my religion. So he's now getting lambasted, as you can well imagine, Buck, for his decision not to wear a gay pride jersey. This comes on the heels of a several these players, if I remember in Major League Baseball also saying, hey, yeah, you know what, we prefer not to wear the gay pride jerseys. There's a big difference between allowing people to make their own choice, Buck, and demanding that you celebrate their choice. And that is a distinction that has been lost in many ways. On a range of issues play for decades now, um, where it starts out with Let's all just let's all just accept. Let's all just be accepting. Let's let's just be cool to each other. And it's about decency, and, and that appeals to good people. And people say, yeah, of course, I want to be accepting, and I want everyone to feel here to make anyone feel bad. And so, sure, we could let's be accepting, or or let's be tolerant. Usually, it starts with tolerance. But you really got to accept this, and then it's actually you have to celebrate this. Yeah, and that's the way the left has. Look, this, the slope is slippery. This is the way they've operated on many things uh, in the social issues realm. And I just think it's, it's interesting to me that the, the NHL, who's making this decision at the NHL? Great question. I, mean, I, I, like, I really don't know. I mean, I figure you would have a better idea. I'm sitting here thinking, NHL audience demanding this in any it, way? It, you know, the NHL tweeted out recently, we wrote about this at OutKick, trans women are real women. But kind of out of nowhere, because I'm looking around, I'm thinking, like, the average NHL fan is a, and again, I'm stereotyping, but a Western, beer-drinking, uh, cold-weather-loving, uh, kind of beefy dude, right? I mean, if, if I were like, if you were like, hey, what's the average NHL fan look like? I'd be like, he's probably 49 years old, weighs four he should, loves beer, and likes watching guys fight. That would not be a lot of, general, like, yeah. Not a lot, a lot of, of pronoun, pronouns in the, yes. in the bio. Or not the a lot of mask wearers. Not a lot of people out there that are saying trans women can get pregnant. Uh, men can get pregnant. There's not a lot of that out there. And so it's a fabulous question because this also ties in, in the state of Florida, the NHL had job fair, I'm sure you saw this buck in South Florida, where they specifically and aren't welcome at this job fair. And then Ron DeSantis clapped back on it and they backed down. But when you consider that the NHL is saying trans women are women, that they're doing LBGTQ, whatever the additional letter is, Pride Nights, and it's considered now unacceptable. One of the ESPN reporters, Buck, came out and said, well, 
this is really unacceptable because this same defenseman is going to wear a military support jersey. And I'm like, well, that's totally different, right? Like, you can support the military and also, you know, be willing to say, hey, thank you for everybody out there who's, who's fighting for the country. The fact that I would even equate that with a gay pride uh, jersey is to me quite a bit different. But yeah, I think it's a great example of alienating the base audience that you have that supports your product that in no way is woke at all. In fact, they despise the stuff, generally speaking. And have they done this in other leagues? Oh yeah, because Major League Baseball has done it. Um, they had a controversy because a couple of Rays players refused to wear the jerseys. Um, I don't think the NFL has done it, to my knowledge, on the jersey itself. But it's definitely... are not in alignment here. And I think you saw this with DeMar Hamlin with the extreme religious response from players. Joining at midfield to pray, things like that. That's not the same dynamic that would exist in the press box. The average member of the sports media is not praying before a football game. It's very common, though, among the players and coaches themselves. I mean, can I just note, you know, being told that you have to support anything i find uh, uh, you know annoying like if i yeah for example you know i voted for trump twice i think trump did a great job if someone said well you have to you're not allowed to be at this rally unless you're wearing a maga hat for example yeah. i just put this out there nothing against maga hats but i don't want to be told that i have to do it, right yeah. and that's for something that i totally support i just think that the notion that people should have to um, you know, in an area, especially if you're a hockey player, so it's nothing to do with playing hockey. I don't think you should be forced to support any political cause because it sets this president or, or any cause. I, I just, I don't really understand why anybody would think that that wouldn't lead to lead to trouble. I mean, because if you, let, let me kind of take it to the next level. If you can be told you have to wear, it was a, it was a gay pride jersey. Was that the yes. yeah, gay pride? I don't even know the story. Clay told me about the story. Gay Pride jersey. Why can't you be told you have to wear a BLM jersey? Yeah, I, I don't. Right. I don't know why you wouldn't be. To, you couldn't be told you don't have to wear a BLM jersey if you're going to play play hockey. You know, hockey's not diverse enough time to put on jerseys, right? That's you could see how that would happen very easily. So I just think that this is a bad precedent. So. Well, it's bullying basically because yeah. you're telling somebody, hey, you have. And again, there's a big difference between accepting, like you have the right to make a choice, and you should have a right to want to celebrate something or not. And I just think it's becoming shifted from the acceptance to celebrate it. Really. And, um, you know, I, I understand the point of things that are blandly inoffensive, right? So if you choose that you want to wear because you're fighting breast cancer. The problem with that, right? Players sometimes wear pink cleats or pink, uh, you know, uh, like arm sleeves or whatever else on their uniform. But if you mandated that everybody had to do anything, then it has nothing to do with the job itself. I think your, your analogy of wearing a MAGA hat, even if you support Trump, because the idea that you would have a uh, requirement as to what you're going to wear based on your really it's really becoming on the present and you look at it with the Ukraine knows with the him or her and the pronoun the email signatures like it's really kind of crazy yeah i mean i don't want to be unless it's a, a a wedding or a funeral or i'm in the white house i don't want to be told to wear a jacket and top so i definitely don't want to be told that i have to wear it as some kind of political or cause or any other affiliation i, I bet a huge percentage of our audience buck has felt pressure to change their email signature if you have an email address at work to preferred pronouns in it. I remember the first time I saw preferred pronouns anywhere. It was actually at Vanderbilt University, and I, where I went to, to law school, and this was years ago. had their pronouns on, and this was probably a decade ago, and I thought, this is the dumbest thing that I have ever seen in my life. And now, Almost every corporation 
has got the signature to put your pronouns in. And if you don't, I've gotten tons of emails. I bet you have two bucks for people who say, hey, my uh, spouse or my company is requiring this or whatever it is. And if you don't celebrate and comply as if sharing your pronouns is a normal thing, there are consequences at work. What do you it's think would happen if you, if you, for, for most people who work in some work, work at a corporate uh, law firm in New York, that you're at a, one of those big management agencies out in LA, do you think you could, do you think anybody would challenge you if you put one of the, you know how they have these new pronouns now too? Like my pronouns are like, you know, Z as in XZ, and do you, th do you think that HR that you know you got to choose how you were addressed and he said that he wanted to be addressed as his majesty every time that he was called on in class and uh, that those were his preferred you know choice uh the terms and it turned into there's like well you're mocking the the, the 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 process by which we call on people he said no no the idea that you have preferred pronouns is the mockery i'm just pointing out the absurdity of it by choosing a signifier to identify myself in class. It actually is really funny. So, you know, if you... The, the, the idea of choosing your pronouns, to me, gets really funny because it does lend itself naturally to, well, I get to choose my adjectives. So, I can't be referred to in any article unless you say the incredibly brilliant and handsome Clay Travis. Like, no, you And yet, that's effectively what we're being told exactly to do all, all the time. The pronoun, I always say this, it's not about politeness, that's not why they care so much. They actually use the desire to be polite as a weapon against people of reason, sense, and rationality. And they can't play the game of, it's no big deal, just do it. If you don't do it, it's a huge deal. That's, that's exactly, exactly what, what they try to do all the time. Why are you so focused on this, they say. And you say, why are you? <laughs> yeah, right. Ivan Provorov is just like, yeah, you know, I'm just not that into it. I'm going to choose not to do it. And they're like, reminds me again, I think we've played this audio before, of the old school Seinfeld episode where Kramer, does, Kramer doesn't want to wear the AIDS pen. And the, he gets a confronted. He will, will, not, will not wear the ribbon, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah, the, the ribbon. And they come after him uh, for not wearing the AIDS walk. I mean, we're really kind of living that era now where it's not even hyperbole. It's not satire. It's real life. Kramer tried to tell us. Some companies come into existence to solve a problem or make life easier at home. Legacy Box does that. Uh, sure. Let me tell you, a lot of you right now are coming out of the holiday season, and you probably make memories with your kids, with your grandkids, with your aunts, your uncles, friends and family, far and wide. And maybe you got those right now stored on your phone. If you look down at your phone right now, okay, that's digital, that's in the cloud. Hopefully that's taken care of. But how many Christmases have you not preserved? How many pictures out there in the attic? How many of those are not going to be preserved forever? And you kind of feel a little twinge in the back of your mind when I mention all this. Why not just go ahead and take care of these memories forever, once and for all? Go to Legacy Boss. They've done this for 10 years. They have a team of more than 200 trained technicians. They'll hand transfer all of your tapes, film, it's cassette tapes, whatever it is that you're sending to them to a digital file to be able to preserve it. Go to LegacyBox.com slash Clay. Use my name in the URL to get a great discount on your deal. LegacyBox.com slash Clay. That's how you get started. You're going to love the results of having all these family memories digitized and preserved forever. LegacyBox.com. Supply chain of smarts, sanity, and truth. Uninterrupted. Clay Travis. 1460 and FM 101.1.
We are so happy it's working for you and your husband like it does for thousands of others across America. Relief Factor is a 100% drug-free solution developed by doctors to help your body attack the underlying inflammation causing pain. Your first step to becoming pain-free could just be to order the three-week quick start for only $19. After over a half a million people have gone on to order more. Go to relieffactor.com 800 for relief to find out more about this offer. That's 800 for relief. Live your best life and feel the difference with Relief Factor. Digitalism discs and all your artist stations, plus any song from our life, millions of songs, all ad free. Get your free 30 day trial of iHeartRadio all access. You'll love it. Don't be basic, be extra. Start your free 30 day trial of iHeartRadio all access now. You look great. I feel great. I got a personal loan from Happy Money and now my credit card debt's gone. Happy looks good on you. Personal loans with low fixed rates and your best interests at heart. Apply today. HappyMoney.com. Happy Money. Fund your happy. NMLS ID number 139-6805. Not all applicants may qualify. Loans are not offered in Massachusetts and Nevada. Happy Money. Additional terms, conditions, and eligibility requirements may apply. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I'm asking about Prevnar 20, because there's a chance pneumococcal pneumonia could put me in the hospital. Age 65 or older, you may be at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or find... For adults to help prevent infection, 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adult immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most commonly reported side effect was pain at the injection site. For additional common side effects and full prescribing information, please call 1 855 213 2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. I want to be able to keep my plans. So I'm asking my doctor about getting vaccinated with Prevnar. We're all we're huge in the universe nightmare. Become real. Feel real fear. I think I felt it before. What? I said. It sounds like every other horror movie trailer. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, here's some real milk to relax that monster voice. Thanks. But this is my real voice. I can't. Hey dude, this movie is horrible. Let's wrap it up. Get real. Got Mel? When should your education begin putting your career? Your first class or your last? At University of Massachusetts Global, the answer is both. Our programs are designed for the career data and up-to-date employer trends working hand-in-hand with industry advisors in your field. From the moment you start, you can apply your new skills. And when you graduate, your skills will keep you way ahead. Call it career-centric education, only at UMass Global. Better enroll now at umassglobal.edu or click the bank. Life is uncertain. It's okay to feel stressed, anxious, worried, or frustrated. It's normal. With CalHOPE's free and secure mental health resources, it's easy. This one was from NBC this morning. They were claiming it as an exclusive at 9 a.m. That in his comeback for the White House, being president, Trump has access to Twitter already. Should he choose to use it? And then also his campaign, as he does have a campaign, he's formerly a candidate, his petition, his Facebook account. Look. I think Facebook, I mean, first of all, obviously, I think they should do it, but I think Facebook has to do it, which has been my point all along about Twitter, that on some of these issues, one damn other 
Series are going.